So, ladies and gentlemen, you will remember that last week we discussed how NSA head Keith Alexander said we have to come up with a way to stop the reporting on the Snowden NSA documents and how the British Prime Minister David Cameron threatened the press in Britain. Well, we have an update related to that on a related NSA story that we covered back in August. You might remember that uh, Guardian reporter Glenn Greenwald's husband, David Miranda, was detained and questioned for nine hours without a lawyer at London's Heathrow Airport under a British terrorism law. British authorities seized all of his electronic equipment, supposedly looking for Snowden documents. Uh, Miranda was never charged with any crime. Well, Reuters actually has a report out this week on how after the incident, uh, David Miranda has filed a legal action in Britain asking for his materials, uh, his computer, his laptop. He had a video game system that was taken, his property. He wants his property returned and that a review be conducted about the actual legality of his detention. Again, remember, he was detained under a terrorism law while uh, Glenn Greenwald worked for The Guardian and Miranda's very travel was paid for by The Guardian itself. Well, in the beginning aspects of Miranda's lawsuit, Scotland Yard has presented documents that clearly, clearly equate uh, uh, Greenwald's journalism with flat-out terrorism. In fact, they use the word. Reading from the Scotland Yard document that was uh, prepared with the London Intelligence Agency MI5 that Reuters published uh, that they obtained at the trial, quote, quote, intelligence indicates that Miranda is likely to be involved in espionage activity, which has the potential to act against the interests of the UK national security. We assess that Miranda is knowingly carrying material, the release of which would endanger people's lives. Additionally, that the disclosure or threat of disclosure is designed to influence a government and is made for the purpose of promoting a political or ideological cause. This, therefore, falls within the definition of terrorism. End quote. Folks, you heard it right then and there. The British government has officially, in a court document, linked journalism with espionage. Linked journalism with terrorism. Terrorism! So, Glenn Greenwald and his husband are exactly the same as Osama bin Laden, according to the British government. Uh, you know who else published the Snowden documents? The Washington Post, those terrorists. You know who else published them? The New York Times, terrorists. And I want to reread re -read another part of this document uh, on what exactly makes this journalism terrorism in the minds of the British government. Quote, the disclosure or threat of disclosure is designed to influence a government and is made for the purpose of promoting a political or ideological cause, end quote. Look, folks, right now, right now, with this show, with this segment I'm doing on this show, and we've talked about the Snowden documents a ton on this show, I, right now, ladies and gentlemen, am promoting a political and ideological cause. I am. I guess, in the eyes of the British government, I am a terrorist as well. It's, it's, this is unbelievable, and this is huge. And, and then it still blows my mind that there are still people who think that these NSA revelations, they're not a big deal. Oh, the NSA, they're not a big deal. The bloody British government is calling the husband of one of the reporters a terrorist. Not in Iran, not in North Korea, in Britain, our biggest bloody ally. <coughs> Pardon me, Trevor Tim, 
uh, from the Freedom of the Press Foundation, who's a friend of the show, but on the show before, has a post up there where he actually calls on the United States State Department to condemn Britain for their suppression of journalism. Tim actually has a quote from the State Department on the topic of journalism and terrorism, and I'm going to read it now. The State Department has, quote, "...concern that the application of anti-terrorism laws can sometimes undermine freedom of expression and independent media." End quote. Well, that sounds good, right? That sounds great. That's a great thing for the State Department to say. That's a great statement for the State Department. Oh, wait, oh, wait. That's not from 2013. That's actually from 2012. My fault. And, and they're actually not condemning Britain. They're actually condemning Ethiopia. My bad. Oops, sorry. Oh, wait, oh, wait. There's another one. There's another State Department uh, quote. This again. So this is from the State Department on terrorism and journalism. Quote, Government has used the anti-terrorism proclamation to jail journalists and opposition party members for peacefully exercising their freedoms of expression and association. End quote. Good job, State Department. Wait a... Oh, wait. Sorry. That's another one about Ethiopia. My bad. Oh, wait. There's another one here. Quote. Authorities imprisoned scores of journalists who remained incarcerated at year's end, most charged under anti-terror laws or for connections to an illegal organization. End quote. Yeah, not Britain again. That's actually the State Department talking about Turkey. Sorry about that. I'm really confused here. Oh, here we go. Here's the State Department defending a radio journalist in Burundi. Sorry, not the UK. This one's in Burundi. No, 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 wait. I have it. Here's one. Here's one. All right. Here's a man who was charged under anti-terrorism laws for posting a YouTube video. And about that, the State Department said, we support freedom of expression and of the press. As we say all the time, universal rights that are indispensable part of any society. End quote. Good job. Except that's in Morocco. You get my point, point here, folks. You get what I'm talking about here. The United States State Department has not bothered to condemn the use of anti-terror laws against the husband of a journalist who's actually, in fact, an American citizen. Remember that, folks. Remember that even the, a bigger deal. Here we have the United States condemning all these, uh, rightfully condemning the suppression of journalism in other countries. But here we have Glenn Greenwald, who is a joint U.S. and Brazilian citizen. He is both. And the State Department says nothing. The State Department says, Morocco, you're horrible. Ethiopia, you're horrible. Burundi, you're horrible. Turkey, you're horrible. They're all horrible for using anti-terror laws with journalism. But Britain, Britain, yeah, they're fine. That's fine because they're Britain. You know, again, I, I don't know about you. I'm not holding my breath waiting for the State Department to actually step up on this. But, but here we have an example, folks, of really how quickly... The tide of this can change. If you think that these NSA, NSA stories and these laws and the and the use of, 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 of terrorism laws to prosecute freedom of speech and journalism, if you think it can't it can't happen, do you let me ask you this? Do you really honestly think that the United States government is incapable of doing something like that's happening in Britain? Of course they're not. Uh, as we've said many, many times, right now the United States is charging whistleblower Edward Snowden under the Espionage Act. Espionage. They charged Chelsea Manning under the Espionage Act. There is not a very big leap from espionage to terrorism. Hell, that Scotland Yard document that the British government released, the British government makes that very leap. Espionage to terrorism. And I'm pretty sure our government isn't that far off from doing the same. We'll be right back. <laughs> 